Stan Jabalisco here. A little more uh, about digital electronics from my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 5th edition, a link to which I will provide in the description of this video. What I'd like to talk about here comes out of chapter 26, and it's an illustration, figure 26-4, that shows how analog to di digital or digital to analog conversion might work. Um, imagine an analog waveform. Analog meaning continuously variable. Here it is. Now suppose we want to convert this to digital pulses with eight possible different levels going from 000 to 111. That's 0 through 7. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So what we do is we take the nearest, uh, at each point along this uh, graph, the points separated by specific and constant increments of time called the sampling interval. That might be, for example, one millisecond or one microsecond or even one second depending on the type of signal and the type of conversion we want to accomplish. But let's suppose that we want to convert this analog signal into digital pulses. At each one of these points in time, indicated by the little hash marks, we sample the analog waveform and then create a digital pulse that has a level at one of these eight possible different states corresponding to the nearest value that this analog waveform has to this level. So for example, here the analog waveform is closest to 110. Again here it's closest to 110. Here it's closest to 011. Down here and here it's closest to 001 and so on and so forth. But we have to make sure that we only sample the signal at exactly these points in time and no others. They're all separated by an equal length of time or an equal period called the sampling interval. So what we're doing is sampling this analog waveform and then converting it to a series of digital pulses. The length or uh, the length of time that each pulse lasts is represented by the width of the pulses in this graph. The wider the gray uh, rectangles, the longer the pulse would last. But you, may, you will notice that the pulses all have the same width and they are all equally spaced. They differ in amplitude but they can only attain one of these eight possible states. So that is how analog to digital conversion would work. And as for converting the signal back to the analog waveform, that's a little trickier business. You can't be sure that this is exactly the wave that you will get in the output if you sample this digital signal and try to convert it to an analog wave. More likely, you'll get something closer to what corresponds to the tops of each one of these pulses. That's why in digital to analog or in analog to digital conversion it's important that you make the sampling interval as short as possible so that you get as many samples as you can for each interval of time. If you took calculus you may notice the resemblance between this process and the rectangle method of describing integration. But uh, that's topic for another video. I want to make sure I don't yammer at you too long, so I'll just let you know once again that this stuff and related topics can all be found in Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics 5th Edition, a link to which I will provide in the description of this video. Stan Jibalisco signing off. Until next time, so long.